Well, hi guys. I've had some requests to do a video with voiceover um, on how I approach curly fur. That also combined with drawing lighter dogs. So I thought this would be a good one to start off with because Charlie here is quite, he's a light colour in general. So um, that combined with the really curly fur, I thought this would be a good one to show how I do this. So here I'm just applying a base layer of soft pastel sticks that I have sanded down on a bit of sandpaper applying that to the pastel mat so that it's a really thin layer and then mapping in where my basic shapes are with a lighter pencil so that I don't lose where I am on the portrait and then I'm going to add in some slightly darker subtle tones to this lighter area blend them out and then overlap the curls on top so like you can see here I've just added that slightly darker section so that my curls stand out that much more I'm just mapping in now where the main sets of curls are and then what I tended to do with this portrait rather than going in with a darker base I've gone in I've put in a, a lighter mid-tone put in my main curls with a lighter pencil and then I've added the shadows exactly like here separately so that I didn't make Charlie too dark if I was to put a darker mid-tone down on the section above his above his eye there he would have been way too dark so I did this slightly differently how I did, for instance, Oliver's portrait that you saw earlier in the week. But um, this is how I approached this portrait because there was a couple of elements combined with how light his fur was and how subtle some of the curls were. That's why I did this this way. So once I've got the other eye in, I'm now mapping in where the, these mid-tones are. And this is a darker pencil now so that I don't lose where the curls bend around so that you follow the shape of the fur i put in that main white curl there just off in the middle so that it's mapped out so that i know where the curls in between the left and the right eye need to go mainly because that was the main curl that i noticed in between it was the lightest one so once i got that in it was a reference point as to where i had to put all the other details and all the other curls mapping in here where my main sets of curls are putting in my mid-tone around it and then adding a darker mid-tone because when I say darker mid-tone I'll then put the darker shadows with a pencil around the curls because these curls because they're quite thick curls they will create a shadow in themselves with the fur that's underneath exactly the same process here capturing those very subtle details there where that lighter highlight is curled over so you just want to add a few little fur strokes to show which way that that fur originates from and then the main part of that curl where it's catching the most of the light using my soft tools here to put that pastel down putting in some darker colors there with my pastel sticks once i've got these edges in i know where where my boundary needs to be so I'm blocking in now where the basic shapes are, softening them out because there wasn't as much detail on here because it was not overexposed but it was brighter so there wasn't the same amount of contrast in the curls. Continuing that slightly darker section above his head, following really closely your reference photo so you make sure that you follow where these curls or the direction that they're going. blending them out, softening it. This bit didn't need to be as in focus, as I say, because it was so much lighter than everything else. The contrast just wasn't there. Adding in these base layers so that it gives me a foundation to add these curls on top. And you'll see with all of my portraits, I work in really small sections. I break it up into really small areas. This sort of portrait would be really daunting if you tried tackling it and you did all your base layer all at one go, lost where your reference points are where by potentially not blocking in where these main curls are. I think I wouldn't have achieved the same end result as I did by doing it this way. But that is my personal preference. It's just how I like to work. So you always want to make sure that you follow the skeletal structure of the dog. So the, the bridge of the nose makes 
the fur curl out in a certain way above the eyes makes the curls go overlap the eyes in certain aspects so you just want to make sure that you really pay close attention to the angle and the direction of the fur especially with a dog like this because the curls they're not random they follow the structural skeletal system of the dog so under the eyes and above the eyes on curl curly types like this are always darker just because you've got that fur that's overlapping over the tops of the eyebrows it will cast a shadow on the bottom section of the eye and where it is slightly in shadow under the eye it might not have as much detail there it might look softer don't add detail where it isn't seen in the reference photo if it looks slightly softer make it slightly softer it's really tempting for you to try and draw something because you think it should be there if it's not there on your reference photo then don't add it don't make your life more difficult so just pay really close attention to it have it close to your subject so that you're not having to look too far away it, by the time you get to your, your drawing you've lost where you are type thing so follow it really closely that's the biggest tip i can give you And especially for a dog like this, it would be really easy to put curls where they're not. So once that's why I block in where the main sets of curls are, and then you can work around that, making sure that you still follow the texture, the softness and the colour of the fur for that individual dog. So like with the tongue, like with the video of the nose that I've just posted, it's all a layering process, start from lights to darks. Like with the tongue, it's really important to capture that shadow that's cast at the back and that's purely because the light can't reach that part of the mouth, so it's always going to be darker at the back. Capturing that contrast and the shape of the tongue where it is resting on the teeth either side is what will make everything appear that much more realistic and not flat. And it would be really easy to rush these base layers and start wanting to add detail like this because this was a really fun portrait to work on. There was lots of different shapes, really, really nice. But if I didn't get my foundations in place and the colours as accurate as I could for the base layers, I would be making my life so much harder because I'd have to blend it out, make it slightly darker, which is fine. But if this is just the easiest way that I find that I can tackle fur types like this. There I added a slightly darker tone just so that my lighter layers showed up that much more. And you want to pay attention to whether or not your colour is a light, is a is a warm highlight or a or a cold highlight. So Charlie was all warm in general, so I tended to stick to oranges and reds, creams, but you might have a highlight that needed a, a purple shade or a blue, but it would still be cast as a highlight depending on the light source. So here, this part of the portrait was the lightest part. So there, it wasn't as many curls to capture here because it was all more of one tone, less contrast, but you still want to get that slightly darker base layer so that you can still overlap your lighter colours on top and I softened it out here because like I say there wasn't the same amount of contrast so you, again you don't want to be drawing details that you can't see because your brain wants you to think well of course there's a curly coat there should be curls there but if it's not there in the reference photo you don't always have to draw it obviously if you're maybe working from a, a slightly lesser quality photo you might have to add details where needed but for this for this portrait of Charlie the, the photograph was was beautiful was perfect so this part of the base layer was slightly darker and that's because it curls over there's quite a wave in the curls there longer fur and then it waves over at the end so that would cast quite a shadow underneath making sure that you create that blended edge there. You don't want anything too sharp if you're doing a portrait where you're blending out the head and shoulders. 
I quite like to make it blended so it fades off into the, the background or the, the colour of the paper. I hope this video was of use. Um, pop any comments below for any other suggestions for other videos you might want me to make. Um, and my next voiceover will be uploaded on Saturday. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. That's very much appreciated. Bye.